Hey, how's it going everybody? So today I want to talk about using the watch menu inside of Visual Studio. For me, I'm using Visual Studio 2019 uh, just as a reference. So if you're not familiar with where some of these settings are or where to access the menu, if you go up to the top here, you're going to see debug and assuming your application is debugging currently. So if you start it and set a breakpoint and it's stopped at that breakpoint, uh, you should see all these options. And the one we're interested in today is you go to debug, windows, and then go down to watch, and then click any of these. For me, I clicked watch one, and then that'll pull up and open this window you can see here on the bottom left. And right now it's blank. So it's gonna ask you to add item to watch. Now I'm just gonna show you an example of what this is, and I'm gonna to explain it to you after what it is. So for me, I'm gonna type in this, and then weekly forecast. So it's just a property um, of, of a list on my class here. And I'm going to uh, hit tab just to enter it in. So you can see it's null right now. And let's go ahead and step over some of my methods in my program here. And you can see here it went from null to count equal, equals five. So that's the value of the list. And if we click the drop down on the left, you can see we can enumerate the list and we can see each object contained in the list. So if we expand the object, we can see each of the properties uh, in the object. So is cloudy, is rainy, is sunny, um, and we can see all the values for each of those, and we can do it for each object within that. So you can already see how this can be super helpful, especially in larger applications where it's very complex, and you don't want to write some of that, you know, some of that, like, code, like, Everyone's done like a for each, you know, console.log or, you know, write line, whatever, whatever you're writing in. Um, we've all done that. And sometimes it's really annoying to mess with the code and then recompile and then rebuild. You know, it, it, this is can be a lot simpler and a lot easier. Um, I know you can also, you know, obviously you can mouse over the, the property like this and you can drop down. Um, but if you've ever worked in complex like objects with a lot of like, um, if, if there's a lot of like <laughs> nested lists or anything like that, you know that these drop downs are a pain because the second you mouse over, uh, you run the risk of everything disappearing and then you got to go back and, and do the whole thing again. So this, that's not the ideal solution. Um, if you get to, if you get used to using the watch menu, uh, although it's not necessary, it's not like it's a breakpoint where it's like necessary every time you try to debug something. If you get in the habit of using watch, it can be really powerful. And another reason why it can be really powerful is because if you need to experiment with adding a filter, any kind of link statement or anything like that, or some kind of lambda, you can do it in the watch menu as kind of a, a trial run. So in in, the, in our case, if we wanted to get uh, each day of the week where it's sunny, um, I can actually do that here. So if we type in, uh, you know, this dot weekly forecast, and then we want to do our, uh, where clause here. So we can type in where, and then we can make our, our Lambda. So we get access to is sunny. And then we can say, you know, if that's true, um, and then we can get the results of that. So you can see here, it's, um, we have our I enumerable, and then if we expand that, we can enumerate through the results here, and then we can actually see what we get from our uh, where, our where filter. So we can see two objects, and is sunny is true, is sunny true, and then if we need to change that, we can change it real quick. So we can say, you know, is, say like, is cloudy, um, and just hit enter, and let's see what our results are. Are. So we get f uh, five. So I guess is cloudy is set for everyone. Um, but you can see how fast that is. So and you can definitely see how you could leverage that in complex programs to just make it way easier to debug. Um, so I'm going to walk through what my code is doing just so it makes a little more sense as to why you know I want to see this. So let me make myself a little bit smaller. Down we go. So we're in our weather service, and this uh, this program you've seen before in previous videos. Uh, I think I used this one for some of the keyboard shortcuts. But basically, let me just step through everything. So this is just a MVC 
the web app, you know, kind of out of the box. So if we go to the home controller, the first thing that's going to get called um, when our index loads is this weather service main. So it's going to call this main method here, and that's where the bulk of what what you just saw took place. So we're first going to check if we've seen uh, the forecast, and the scene forecast you can see gets set when we display the forecast on the console. So we've seen the forecast. So when that happens, it's going to be true. But if we're opening this for the first time, we're not going to have seen the forecast. So we're going to get um, our weather and get our forecast like you just saw me when I put the watch in there. So get weather is just going to create a new list of forecast and forecast is just an object that has these properties here. So we're going to make a new list and we're going to add that to the weekly forecast, um, which will contain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday forecast. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the forecast and that all that's doing is just going to write that to the debug um, window. And then we're just going to say, is it sunny? And then we're going to print out is sunny for that day. And then once we do that, we've seen the forecast. So that's all this is doing. And obviously, you know, conceptually it's easy, it's easy to understand what's going on, but just try to put this in the context of a larger application, a more complex application. So if you were working in this and you just started up the application first thing and you needed to know, you know, quickly and easily like what this weekly forecast looks like the whole time in our application, we can add that like we just saw to the watch menu here. So we have this weekly forecast. We can see that it's null. And when we step through, okay, you know, step through, it's, it's still null. Step through after get weather, it'll step out, let's step um, through that. And we can see it changes. So if we were to, let's see, if we were to move that breakpoint um, and put one here, we can see that once we get weather, then it populates weekly forecast. So if you were new to an application, you're trying to just figure out the logic, um, setting watches on the properties can allow you to more quickly see when the properties you're concerned about are getting populated. And that's really important because obviously you can track the logic and you can set breakpoints and you can do all that. Like there's other ways to do this, but if you're coming into the application and maybe you just you just want to see it a little bit easier. This is honestly a great route to go. And if you're ever in a, like a coding, uh, like interview or anything like that, or you're doing any kind of live coding, having a familiarity with debug tools like this is a, it looks great. So if you know breakpoints, you're already, you're already, you're already in a good spot. Like if you know, like stepping over, stepping into and then stepping out of if you know how to do all that you know that's that's good and that you should know how to do that but if you know how to start leveraging some of the other debug tools at your disposal to help you figure out problems that's going to look really good because it's going to show that you have a greater just familiarity with some of the tools um out there so we can see that you know let's let's just go ahead and continue and continue so we see that, and then you, you can see once we, uh, once we continue and we're not currently debugging, the watch menu um, goes away. We can't, we can't set a watch when we're not debugging. Um, but if we were to reload this, you know, it would re-enable the watch menu. So let me make, let me make myself a little bit bigger. So that's all I want to show. Again, this is just really the basics of what this is and how this can be used. Obviously, I just scratched the surface on how this can be used, but I just wanted to introduce it to you because I feel like, um, you know, at least for me, I didn't, I wasn't too familiar with some of these tools when I first started out. And then I saw some of the other developers use these uh, where I work. And I'm like, hey, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a really easy thing like easy tool to use and I had no idea about it and it's really helpful I've used these um, qu 
quite, I wouldn't say a lot, but I've definitely, the times that I've used them has been, have been very helpful. And I used it literally in the same context what I was just talking about here. So I like, I was in a new area of the code and I needed to track a couple of the properties on the class. And I, you know, it, was, it just gets crazy to try to jump around where they get set and everything like that. So I just set a couple watches on the properties that I was trying to track and I could see when they get populated and what they're filled with and how they they change. That's also a key thing to to note is that sometimes, especially especially if you have reflection set up in your class, um, that can make things super complicated. So if you have if you set a watch on a property and you can see when it gets mutated, you can more quickly track down reflection related problems. And if you're not familiar with reflection, definitely check that out. It's it's used um, quite a bit, I would say, and some places look at it differently. Some places, um, some places leverage it, and some places don't, just because it makes it way harder to track. But basically, reflection is. Well, I don't want to explain this video. Just go look, go look it up, and maybe I'll make a video about it in another time. But anyway, thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully, this was helpful, and hopefully, this adds value to you. If you have any more comments or suggestions or anything else you want to see related to Visual Studio, let me know in the comments. And if you want to know anything about how I use Visual Studio on a day-to-day -day basis, let me know in the comments. I'd love to make a video and help anyone out if they need it. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.